Okay, hi Abdul. Abdul, excuse me. <clears throat> this is David Potter. And I just opened Chief Architect X2. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new plan. Click on new plan. Now, what you ought to do and what new users almost never do is think through your project. Because, you know, let me explain. <clears throat> this software doesn't read your mind. It doesn't, quote, know, close quote, anything. It's just, it's no more intelligent than a hammer or a plow share or an ox. Actually, it's less, less intelligent than an ox or a bird. So you have to supply the intelligence. And so I've got a blank plan here. The first thing I would recommend that you do is go to Edit Default Settings. And you see all these categories here starting with cabinets. It's in here alphabetically. And if you're going to have some cabinets in your plan, uh, I'll click on base cabinets, click on edit. And you can set what, how your cabinets look, how tall they are, how wide they are by default. And of course, this sort of thing you can change after you create it. But you want to set the attributes of, of the majority of objects to whatever it is you're going to draw. If you're going to, not going to use this material, over on the Materials tab, that'd be Cabinet. It's uh, Birch, Birch Honey. That's the default. <coughs> if you're going to use something else, pick something else and set it in your de base cabinet defaults. <coughs> your countertop material, see it's got granite on it. Uh, you may or may not want to use granite. It's very pretty, but it's also very expensive and so on. There's material settings for each of the attributes of a base cabinet. That's all I wanted to show you. <clears throat> and there's a separate settings, default settings for your upper cap, your, excuse me, full height cabinet default. Same things, material settings, door style, blah, blah, blah. Wall cabinets. There's a setting, there's settings for everything and the software is going to follow these settings unless you change them how, what you actually intend to build. So you need to think this through and then set that up. So there's settings for these categories. Now I'm not going to try to teach you the whole program, but there's settings for just about everything in the uh, program and it follows these settings unless you change them. And I wouldn't change them without understanding them and that means study and practice. Uh, the way dimensions uh, operate is com the defaults are set in here. Your door defaults there's a separate one for interior and exterior doors. See, by default, it's going to put that kind of casing around the uh, edges. It's going to give you that kind of door, that kind of door hardware. And all of this can be changed by you if you want. But you need to study the reference manual to find out how, uh, what each of these input boxes are for, what they control, how to change your material settings, and if you want something different from the defaults, you're going to have to learn how to uh, change these and what, and, and what uh, changes can be made. Like on this interior of the two-panel door, you can choose a plan material. And these are materials that are in this floor plan. Otherwise, you go to the library browser. You click on this button here, and it opens the uh, main library browser, where you can pitch where you can pick different uh, finishes and so forth. I'm not going to get into, I just wanted to introduce you to, this is where everything's controlled except for roofs. Roof defaults are set over here under roof tools. I'm going to double click on this icon. And there's tons of settings here. There's tons of settings. Uh, rafter tails, that's very specialized and advanced. I don't even know if you would be interested in that, but if you you want to have specialized rafter tails, you're going to have to find out what that means and how to, how to deal with it. The framing is uh, what kind of dimensional lumber you're going to be using to structurally hold up your roof. And if, uh, <clears throat> if these are not set the way you're actually going to build in the field, well then the, when you build the model it'll be wrong. <laughs> you get the idea. You'll have to learn these terms. I mean, maybe you know what a rafter is, but if you don't, Get it defined so that you understand what that word means and 
ridge, lookout, gable subfascia. Find out what that means. I, in a video tutorial, I just can't take the time to define all of these terms, but these English language terms define what the software does, and, and you want the software to do what you want it to do, so you have to understand what these terms mean, and then learn by studying the reference manual <coughs> how to change these settings. Uh, well, okay, let's look at rafter. Now, rafter is a is the is the structural members that hold up the roof. Yeah, and over here under rafter type, it's type it set the lumber, but you can change it to these other things. If you're going to use steel, you might want to use a C or U channel. Those are types of steel rafters that you could use. That's very expensive, but you get the idea. I just wanted to show you that you don't have to just go with default settings, but you, if you're going to change them, you need to understand what the terms mean, and uh, if you do this, it does that. Uh, see all of these settings here? I can't possibly take the time to explain them all to you. But this is for basically 3D modeling things relative to the roof. Uh, this uh, roof styles tab uh, explains how to generate all the roof, different roof types that are possible. <clears throat> Let's just click on the default one, and you see it op opens a, the help file to hip roofs. And it explains it to you how do you generate hip roofs. So it's a very useful training tool right here. If you want to do a shed roof, you just click there, and there's a here's a little short article that'll teach you how to, to do a shed roof. Very valuable. It looks like probably in Somalia you're going to be having a flat roof. I'm just guessing. The buildings I saw in your photograph looked like they were adobe, adobe brick, natural material type things. <clears throat> so you're going to have to change the program to kind of emulate that because out of the box it's going to emulate uh, construction methods common in the United States, which are not probably as common in Somalia. <coughs> okay, so there's defaults for everything. There's electric defaults, there's defaults for uh, your floors. So you asked me about uh, terrain, and that, that's what I'm going to focus on, but I wanted to introduce you to this software in general runs on settings and nothing else. If the settings are wrong, you don't get what you want. If the settings are right, you get what you want. And you have to be responsible for the settings. Okay. I'm going to go over here to the terrain command and create a terrain perimeter. Left click. Now let's take a look at that. I'll zoom back and you can see it just made a rectangle. <clears throat> when you click on this rectangle, a little, it's, the dimensions are so small, it's kind of hard to see them. But see, that's I, I'm, I'm wheeling in. It's a hunt, made it a hundred feet, and then click on the the left side of it, and it's a hundred by fifty feet. That's just what it's set to by default. <clears throat> I guess you're going to be using metrics, so probably what we ought to do, yeah. On your program, let me cancel out of this. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to go over here to File, <coughs> let's see, New Plan, and uh, hang on a second. File, how am I going to do this? I have never haven't done this in years because <coughs> I, never, I never operate with metric dimensions. Yeah, just, let's just go to New Plan. I'm going to go to Edit Preferences, Edit Preferences. And uh, let's see, where is that? Duh, okay, new new plans. There it is. Edit preferences, general new plans. And you can see that mine mine is set to profile dot plan and profile dot layout, which are in imperial measurements. <coughs> That's inches, feet, uh, inches, feet, yards, things like that. So I'm going to change for this video tutorial, I'm going to change that, and you need to do this. I, let me do that again. I clicked on the Browse button, which takes me to this Templates folder, which by default is found on, my, on your hard drive in My Documents, Chief Architect X2 Data Templates. And from that, I want to find Profile M. Profile M is metric. Profile is, you know... Yankee Doodle measurements are like in England, and uh, metric is like the rest of the world. So I'm going to select Profile M as my 
<clears throat> let's see, that's, uh, I reset it to profile M, even though this says imperial units. Oh, here we go. All right, never mind. It's, it's, it's simpler than I was showing because I, I haven't done this. Let me put this back where it was. Profile plan. I can just change this radio button from imperial units to metric units, and it's all done. Now when I go to new plan, after this is changed in preferences, I'll get, by default, metric units and a metric profile, a metric layout, which maybe I'll get into layer, later. Uh, this software creates two different kind, kinds of files. One's a dot plan file and one's a dot layout file. Just know that for now. Okay, so I went to edit preferences, new plans, and then I changed the radio button position from imperial units to metric units. That's what you need to do. Now I click OK. Now I open that new plan just to get to that interface. But this new plan is not in metric, so I'm, I'm going to close this plan and now go file new. And uh, now when I draw something, it should be in meters and, and centimeters and stuff. Let me just draw a box here. Yeah, that looks like meters. I'll go over here to the dimension tools, and I'm going to automatically exterior dimension those that box that I drew there. And you can see now that it's in centimeters, I guess. Let's take let's open that up and take a look. Yeah. Okay. That's the number height is in millimeters. That's the current default. This doesn't mean that you can't change it. It just means that it's the current default. <clears throat> and on the, oh, by the way, let me back up. You can double click on this uh, dimension icon here and get to dimension defaults. And you can see that the, here's where that default value was coming from, 125 millimeters, is the number height. That's the height of that number. The scale in this uh, plan view is uh, one foot equals one foot, or in your case, one meter equals one meter, or one centimeter equals one centimeter, real world scale. But this determines the height of that, that number there. Let's go to primary format, and you can see the units. Okay, that's 4,120 4, millimeters, because the unit is set to millimeters. In this drop down, you can set it to whatever makes more sense to you, centimeters, CM, I don't know what DM stands for, but maybe you do. But, you could, but this is the default, and it'll show decimal places. You can say no decimal places, or you can set two decimal places. I guess it's just rounding them off. Okay, well this is reading in millimeters. You get the idea? Also, in dimension defaults, there's a tab called locate objects, locate objects. And it's going to go, by default, to the wall dimension layer. And that's what this is currently showing here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. See, these dimension points are to the edge of the structural layer of this wall, not to the surface. Like this wall that I drew with, I'm going to select it and open it and go to the Wall Types tab of the Wall Specification dialog, and you can see that it's a, a siding thin wall, whatever the heck that means. You can click on Define and figure out more about it, how it's parsed, you know, put together, programmed. And uh, so this, this layer here, the outside layer, is, si is this material currently. You can change that material to whatever material makes sense to you. Uh, this is... Uh, a moisture wrap, it's set to zero millimeters thick because it's very thin. It's a plastic wrap that's used commonly in the United States and a lot of places to keep moisture from penetrating the building. Now, like I said, by default, this program assumes that you're going to be building with wood frame, dimensional wood framing and using moisture wrap and uh, siding. And then this next layer in is, okay, this is the, this is the wood stud, which is it's a two by four in, in uh, Imperial measurements. Uh, I don't know what she used in Somalia. I guess it's just whatever you can put your hands on. But you need to. This is the part that I'm. I'm going to emphasize. You have to think this through and set this up to emulate how you're actually going to build your structures. Okay. 
And then here's 10 millimeters of, well, I'm going to left click on this little graphic here. You see it's dr set to sheetrock or drywall. Very common in, in the uh, UK and in the United States and South Africa and Australia and New Zealand. Maybe not so common in Somalia. I have no idea. I've never been to Somalia. And I know, as an American, I know very little about Somalia and its building methods. But I, I do hope this helps you. You can change these values. But this, this radio button here needs to be on the structural layer. Don't move that radio button to uh, some non-structural layer because then it will throw off the way the dimensions, dimension to things and how things fit together. Uh, so I wouldn't change that radio. This, but where, if you create a custom wall type, make, make sure that this radio button, which designates what the main layer is, is on the one, the structural layer that holds the, the whatever you're drawing, whatever holds it up, that radio button needs to be in alignment with the structural layer of the wall you're, you're using. Now, you have to tell me more about the actual kind of wall you're going to build with for me to help you. But I'm going to guess that you, you use some sort of adobe stone wall and not wood. I'm going to, for this tutorial, I'm just going to guess. So, <clears throat> taking that into, I'm just kind of introducing you to the software in general. I haven't gotten to uh, terrain yet, but if you understand how, basically how it works, then you can figure out pretty much anything in the program because it's all organized the same way by the same men and women who, who created it. But let's go over here to Edit, Default Settings, Walls, Exterior Wall, Exterior Interior Wall. Click on the Edit button. And there, this is what, the reason I got these walls when I, when I hit up, clicked on the wall tools because this wall was set as default. Your wall may be something different. See in the drop down there's other default walls that you can pick from. And I don't think there's going to be any walls in here that are exactly like yours. So I'm just going to click on define and click on the new button to create a new wall type. Which right now just has one thickness uh, and I'm going to make this, uh, I have no idea what 100 millimeters is. <laughs> so I'm just going to say it's uh, 500 millimeters. And hit the tab key. Now that's 500 millimeters. Now I'm not going to make this wood. I'm going to make this uh, stone. So I'm going to go to my library material. Now you have X2. You should be able to uh, download additional materials than just what sh this area here. See, I've got manufacturer libraries, uh, tons of them. <clears throat> you should be able to download these from the Chief Architect website. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we're just going to stick with what you probably have under materials. And uh, what ships with the software is pretty limited. I'm going to look under the masonry and stone category. <clears throat> I think there's only one kind of stone that we can really use that stack stone and this probably doesn't look very much like the stone I saw in the picture but let's say it's close enough so now I've <clears throat> created a new wall type let's give it a decent name other than wall we'll call it stone wall and I arbitrarily made it 500 millimeters thick I'm just guessing and then we'll click OK and now that's the default exterior wall type now this interior wall type is a 2x4 with a sheetrock or drywall on either side. I'm going to leave that alone, but you, you see that you can customize these things to, to emulate exactly how you're going to build your house and your structures. Now these four walls here I drew before the default was changed, so they didn't automatically respond to that. I'm going to click on this one, press the, hit the shift key, and hold the shift key down and left click to select all four of those at the same time and I'm going to change them to that new wall type. Stone, there it is, stone wall. See they're quite a bit thicker and uh, in the in a camera view this is what we have. I don't even know how tall it is because 
again, I, I don't think very well in, me, in metric, but I can open the dialog box in here for this closed space. And the ceiling height is 2,800 millimeters. Now, if that has any relation to reality, <clears throat> you'll have to tell me because I'm lost in metric. But uh, if you know that I can't explain how what that means, so we'll look in an elevation camera here. I mean, I did that kind of fast. I, I went up to camera tools and clicked on this and selected the cross-section elevation camera. And it creates a two-dimensional cross-section of this building. And I can check it with dimensions. There's the ceiling, there's the floor, and it's 2,800 millimeters, just like the default said. <clears throat> if my house, if my buildings are, the majority of them are like, let's say, 2,900 millimeters, I would, before I drew very much of the plan, I would go over here to edit default settings, floor, and that's where that 2,800 millimeters is coming from. I'm going to change that to 2,900 millimeters. And then, by default, I open this up, and it's at 2,900 millimeters, because I just told it to. We'll go back to the cross-section. You see that my old dimension now is, has, is still there, but it's, it's below the ceiling. I'm going to move it up to the ceiling. Now it'll say 2,900 millimeters. I mean, this little tutorial here is just to show you that there's a correlation between default settings and uh, the room dialog boxes. I'm going to go back to this room dialog box and uncheck default. And let's say this room, oh, let me, look, I'll tell you what, I'll put a wall in between. This will be probably more instructive. Okay, now this, this room here should be 2,900. I'm going to uncheck default because I want this room to be 3,200. And then you look in here, and you can see that it's, the ceiling's been raised in this space. I'm going to close this and do a cross-section to the left, showing both rooms. You'll see the ceilings don't match anymore. This is the set to the default, and this is where I, I departed from the default. So this one's 2,900. This is 3,200. That's the way the software works. Okay, enough on the ge general... I think that's enough of that. We want to get to terrain planes and stuff. So I'm going to go back to terrain, create terrain perimeter, and it just creates that. <clears throat> and you can change it to your, let's see, you said, uh, I think you said, uh, let me see your email over here on my other monitor. Hang on while I find that. I just didn't remember the dimensions that you sent me. There we go. I think I think this is it. The uh, landscape BMP. Yeah, this is what you sent me. Okay, 40 meters by 40 meters. All right. I'm going to move that off over here, off my. Own. And so I'm going to click here. Click on this dimension. Uh, let me do that again because this is so key. I clicked on an, a particular object of this polyline. This is a polyline. One, two, three, four lines that form a poly. Line. Poly just means more than one. And so, this, and you can see, because I clicked on this one, this move handle is larger than this one, this one, and this one. So that tells me that that's the selected line. And then I can click on the automatic dimension, which controls the location of that. And let's see, it's what, I'm going to put in 40. Let's see, M-E-T-E-R-S, I think that's right. We'll see if it accepts that. No, it doesn't like that. See, it can't parse 40 meters. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean that it can't do meters. It just, I, I have to get the symbol right. <clears throat> Let me just see if that M is right. I want that 40 M. I, I'm, I'm a little bit lost in metric, I'm sorry. Okay, that worked. So that's now 40 meters. Uh, click on this one here. Click on that dimension, which controls this selected line, and see how the cursor changes to a hand when I get near that dimension? Then I left-click. We'll set that to 40 m, 40 meters. And now my terrain plane is 40 meters by 40 meters. That's your land. 
<clears throat> if you had a house on it, then you would you would uh, move this around relative to the house. And if you knew how far to the your property line from the house this is and that is, then you would set this terrain plane to that. Let's take a look at this, just as it is right now. There's that little box that I put there, and there's the terrain plane. I'm going to click on the terrain plane. I just left-clicked on it, and then this is the edit toolbar. I pulled I pulled it off of there because you wouldn't see that it says edit until you, it says edit on it. This is the bar that shows up when something's selected. I hit the space bar <clears throat> when I, when the space bar just allows me to deselect whatever uh, I had selected, and then the, you can see the thing disappears and it'll appear when I select something. The commands that appear in the edit toolbar are germane, apply to the selected object. So I'm going to open this object for its dialog box. <clears throat> and it's showing grass because that's the default material for grass. In your case, maybe it's sand. This will, this will, you have to kind of think this through. I don't think sand is in the plan materials. So I'm going to go to the library. And I think it's under the category of landscaping. Probably sand, yeah, it's landscaping, soil, sand and soil. That, from the picture, that looks kind of like the general material for years. So I'll set that, the terrain to sand. I'm going to set the terrain skirt also to sand. It would look funny with sand and, and then grass on the sides. Let me, well, let me show you what that looks like. You can see that there's a green, a green border. There's two material settings there. Here's for the surface. Here's for the edge. I'm going to open that object and go to terrain skirt. Now, sand is now a, a plan material, so I ought to be able to find it in here. I'm going to hit on hit the S key. There it is. I just got lucky. I, I hit the S key on my t keyboard, and it just went to the S's. And sand, the material I wanted, just happened to be the first of the materials with the name S. So. So there's a terrain plane. If you want it thicker for any reason, you can open the dialog box and go to the general tab, and, and there's the thickness of the of the skirt. We'll set that to uh, yeah, thousand millimeters, just for fun. Yeah, now it makes it thicker. <clears throat> okay, yeah, your land's pretty flat, so I'm, oh, I didn't mean to make a curve out of that. I didn't even know I did that. Anyway, if you have something curved and you don't want it curved, just click on, on the line there. And then there's this command here called change line to arc. I didn't even realize that happened. But you can change lines back, back and forth between straight and curved as you need. I didn't mean to show you that command, but that was just an accident. Because I got this at 40 meters by 40 meters. Uh, I'm going to, this tutorial is not going to last too much longer, but I'm going to go through the basics of uh, uh, terrain planes. I'm just going to turn off those grid snaps. I never used those, and I didn't notice they were on until just now. Uh, look them up in the reference manual if you like, and, and teach yourself what they're for, but I, don't, I never use them. Okay, here's a terrain plane, and you go under up to terrain, and one of the things you're going to be using are, are features. Now I'm going to draw, I'm just going to go through this and draw a rectangular feature. I'm left clicking. I'm going to left click on this spline feature. They're just, they, they have a little bit, a little bit different characteristics. Now a spline, you can deform it and move it around and so forth. Uh, rectangular ones, you, as I showed you just a moment ago, you can curve the sides, just a little, Triangular's handle is to change the arc angle of the curve. I'm left-clicking and dragging with the control key down. I can put that, I can use this command here, change line to arc, make it straight again. And then under terrain features, kidney shape. I almost never use this. I'm going to show it to you anyway. It creates a kidney-shaped thing, which then has handles on it, which you, I can deform it. Move it around. Uh, see the four four arrow cursors for moving the whole thing. 
Each of these objects has a move handle. I'll call that the move handle. And then there's other handles on these different objects to, to change their, their characteristics. Okay, terrain, terrain, terrain. Okay, terrain hull. Well, this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to draw that. And now we'll look at this in the camera view. This is a terrain hull, feature, feature, feature. We'll do an overview camera. And you can see the default material on features is concrete. And then that just makes... The terrain hole just makes a hole in the terrain. Wherever you want terrain not to be, then you can use that tool there to make the terrain not be there. And, of course, these will accept different materials. You click on that, open the object, go to the Materials tab, and there it is, Concrete. If you want it to be water, let's see, water. We can make it water. So you can create a little pond if you want. And there's water. So you can change these ob objects, you know, by their, by their move handles. And by, uh, in the edit toolbar here, I can curve the edge. Uh, this is a little more advanced. It's a fillet tool. I'm not going to get into it right now, this fillet and camper thing. Look it up in the reference manual. By the way, I keep saying that. Let me show you how to do that. You go to help, uh, view reference manual. Uh, I didn't realize it was connected with this, my professional version, but it, it would normally open in Adobe Reader. <clears throat> and you can find out anything you want to find out about how to do anything. Close that. Uh, I want to click on search. Where's the search? Oh, there it is, search. There's the search thing. Now, Adobe Reader will look a little bit different from this, but let's say, uh, what was I talking about? Uh, okay, fill it, F-I-L-L-E-T. Whatever word that you want to look for, you just click on, and here's all the little articles where the word fill it shows up. Let's just pick one of them. And I know there's a lot to learn here, and I'm sorry, but there, there's no way around it. You're just going to have to study this stuff as you come up against something that you don't understand and okay there's the, the fillet edit behavior allows you to add a fillet well a fillet is just a, a curved edge to something I go well now that I brought it up I guess I have to demonstrate it I'm sorry there's so much to learn in this program okay let's we'll do, I'm gonna get rid of that train hole I just put it there to show what it was like well, let's take this object here and say you wanted to just curve the edges not have sharp edges. Well, that's what the fillet tool is for. So I'm going to click on that once and click on it a second time. And then here I can set the radius. I'm going to set it to, again, I'm lost in metric. I'm going to put it uh, 50 millimeters as a radius for, for that. And when that, once that's set, I click on an edge, click on the cam, this uh, fillet tool, and then click on the line I want it to fill it, and it see it's it rounded it off. That's a fillet. Camphor is the kind of similar in, in action. We'll click here, double click on the on the fillet. I mean, camphor. I'll set that to fifty millimeters. And then I can uh, click on this tool again. Well, sorry, I need to click here. And it camfered the edge, so you just made a 45-degree angle there. That's what those tools are for, and this program has lots of wonderful tools in it, but you have to learn how to use them and how to make them do your will. So that's a, camp, that's a uh, fillet edge, and this is a camfer edge. Uh, well, I'm worn out. I hope this, I hope this helps you some. Now, that, for flat terrain, you're in pretty good shape because we don't have to get into elevation lines and all that sort of thing. Let's say you wanted to do your uh, brick wall around here. One way to do it, you could draw it with the architectural wall, but you could also take a feature. Whoops. Oh, I camfered the edge. Let me, let me get rid of that and draw another one. We'll go over here to uh, feature, rectangular feature. Now I'm going to make this look like a wall. 
have to zoom in and grab this handle here and extrude it. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm not even gonna worry about the thicknesses, but you can see here I can move this object very close to the edge of, the, of my property and move the whole object. See by doing that and set that to uh, I don't know 50 millimeters. And it did. Move it over there 50 millimeters. Now, I'm going to open the dialog box of this object here and set the material to stone, which is, should be under the S's. I'll hit the S key and find stack stone. There it is. So it's got, now it's got that, that material. I'll go to the general tab and I can set the height. I can set the height to a uh, thousand millimeters. Whatever the actual height of your, of your fence is. And the thickness, so, okay, well, let's just, just do the height and the thickness is 10 millimeters and see what the result is here. Okay, there's my wall. It's, see, I told it to have a height and it, and, it, and it did what I told it, but I didn't also, I double click on that to open. I want to make a, a thousand. It's just the way they programmed this. So you can define the height, but then you have to, extrude the height, the thickness down from that height. See, now we have a wall. If you understand that, you're way ahead of the game. Let me do an overview. Okay. There's how I would do the majority of your little, little walls. And you can click on that and extrude it. Now, where you have breaks and so forth, you're going to need to break the material. Like, uh, let me just show you that. I'm sure you have gates and so forth, places where people come through and I'm going to hit the uh, copy and place command and then draw, drag the copy out of there using the move handle. See the four arrows? And drag it down here to the end. Now they're overlapping. I'm going to put a little, you know, there I've got a little gap in there. I can take this object here. You don't have to make individual pieces. I'm going to use the uh, break line command here, left click, and then left click on the object where I want to break. And then I can extrude that out. See, where the fence is continuous, I can just make it continuous. Now, I haven't set the thickness over here. You'd have to set the thickness the same. I forget whatever I use, but you get the idea. And we'll click here. I'm going to put a break there and extrude it around. Okay, I'll look at this in an overview. And... Of course, this thickness can be changed and the height can be changed, but you can emulate whatever you want to do. A lot of what you want to do with your, your uh, stacked masonry walls using terrain features that you reprogram. See, I took basically a, a default terrain feature, rectangular, let's see if I can draw one here, yeah. And then I, I just made it look like, I made it look like, you know, a, a fence. I wouldn't use these for buildings. I would use walls, unless you don't care about the interior of the buildings and you don't need windows and doors. See, a terrain feature won't accept windows and doors. It's just a solid object and it carries one material. If you want to have windows and doors and roofs and tables and chairs, then you need to draw your structure with walls. Okay, I think that's the end of this tutorial. This ought to get you started. Uh, this plan here has a 40 meter by 40 meter thing. Now, if you wanted it larger to include the road you mentioned, you just have to, uh, what you would do then, what I, I think what I would recommend to you, so I'm going to take this polyline here, which is a terrain plane, and make a copy of it, copy it in place. And the copy is not going to be a terrain plane. It's just going to be a polyline. We'll change that line characteristic on it to a dash line. So I can tell it from the terrain plane. Now I'll click on that and, and then open it to see what, okay, that's the polyline. I'm going to hit the next button. And this ought to be the terrain plane. Yep. And then you can make this terrain plane larger. You have to have a terrain plane. If you want something to show in 3D, then you have to have, it has to sit on a terrain plane. So. That's your property line, which is 40 meters by 40 meters. I think it's still 40 by 40. It's not measuring where I want it. Anyway, this, this polyline still represents, in plan view, your property. And this 
this you could put a road over here with a train plane larger than your property then you can draw in other features that are adjacent to your property but you have to have a, they have to fit on the train plane I'll demonstrate that and then I'm going to wrap it up we'll go over here to uh, road now, I doubt that you have paved roads I didn't see any paved roads you're probably going to be uh, packed uh, aggregate or something like that anyway we'll start with this and again keep in mind that this program was designed for Americans and blah 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 I'm just going to left click drag there's a road object we'll take a look at it <clears throat> and you can see in plan view it, it goes off the edges of the train plane but in camera views those what's off off the terrain plane just doesn't show and that's the way it's programmed to work and it create automatically creates a concrete curve which you may or may not want and but you can open the dialog box of this change its width change and change the attributes of it of it of it excuse me you change the material settings on it there's a curb there's a road uh, you can probably Let's just delete that. Not that. Let me escape out of that. I want to get the get out of a camera view here. Okay, I got the road now. Delete the road. We'll just use a terrain feature. I that's probably going to work best for you for your roads that I saw. I don't know everything. But we'll just draw that and that'll be the road. And again, you can set the height and width and so forth. This one, this one by default won't have a curb on it. So we'll just set this material to uh, something else other than the sand, which the terrain plane is made out of. We'll go over here to landscaping and sand and soil. I'll use something different from this. We'll just use that. Yeah, what is, you, whatever makes sense to you and what emulates what you want to do, that's what you use. There's no hard set rules in this thing other than appearances which you can control. Okay, there's a road. And of course this can be curved. You can put brake lines in it and make it curve and angle and so forth. But I think this ought to get, be able to get you started. There's a lot more to this. Uh, when people go to work for Chief Architect Incorporated up in Idaho, they get 40 hours of training just so they can answer the telephone. And they're native, they don't even use, but they, and they have to have 40 hours of training just so they are not so stupid that they can't answer the phone. For a guy who was wanting, when he uses, use this, it takes lots of practice and studying the reference manual, looking at the video tutorials that I've sent you a link to. But in your case, with X2, you're not going to be able to access the old X, X2 videos. So, uh, your reference manual, is going to be your friend. Like I can select this uh, terrain thing there and then hit the F1, F1 key and it will automatically open to uh, help files. Oh, I thought it would go to uh, uh, terrain features but it didn't. You can hit the F1 key and then type in and then click on display now it's not working. How about, well, okay. I thought it would work differently. How about PLA, terrain plane. Okay. As you can quickly find, uh, you can put in the, the search field here, open uh, Chief Architect Help, and there's lots of useful explanations in here on how to do things. Now, a lot of the, I know this is all confusing to you, but uh, just stay after it and, and and work at it until you find the data you need and you practice with it. And when when you can produce the result yourself, then you know you understood what you studied. Uh, a lot of new users will say, "Well, I did what the tutorial said, and it didn't work." No, that's false. You didn't do what the tutorial said, or otherwise, you it would have worked. So that's evidence. If you read something and then do what it says and you didn't get the result, there's something that you misunderstood and missed, a word you didn't have a good definition for, or you just need, or maybe you 
you just need to re study it again, find out what you didn't understand, get it understood, and it can do it. Uh, boy, I'm worn out. I hope this helps you. <laughs> I, help is what I intended, and uh, you have a, an excellent uh, reason to do what you're doing, and uh, hopefully this will help you get started, and I, I wish you well. Thank you.